all 13 British colonies in America were involved in slavery. So I, in this session, I want to talk about a little bit about the history of slavery. Slavery is as old as civilization, uh, probably even older than that. Um, ancient Egypt, ancient Greece, Rome, um, they all use slaves. But um, unlike slavery that develops in the American colonies, this ancient slavery was not based on a particular race. Um, Egyptian used Egyptian slaves. Um, Greece used other Greeks to become slaves. Same thing in Rome and other countries um, that used slaves. Um, so it was not race-based, neither was it perpetual. In other words, someone may be um, a debtor, couldn't pay off his debt. The person he owed uh, the debt to could use him as a slave until he had paid off that debt. Uh, then he could be free. Any other slave uh, could earn their freedom. and. It was not perpetual in the sense that if the man was a slave, then his wife and children would also be slaves. That would not be the case in slavery until it reached the Americas. Uh, most slaves before the 1400s were usually prisoners of war or um, debtors. Uh, captives. There were uh, slave catchers that would go out into different areas to capture people to then sell them into slavery to make a profit. About uh, 600, 700 AD or uh, CE is a term that is most often used now to designate a uh, common era 600 or 700 CE, Muslims were involved in the slave trade across Africa. African Muslims or Middle Eastern Muslims would capture other Africans and take these slave caravans across the Sahara Desert to trade to those civilizations that were on the west coast of Africa uh, to exchange for gold or for salt. Um, so they had this several hundred years of being involved in this slave trade. Europeans won't get involved in the slave trade um, until early 1400s when the Portuguese had made their voyages down the west coast of Africa and had claimed several islands in the Atlantic Ocean where they then started planting sugarcane and profiting from the sale of sugar and they took slaves from Africa to work on those sugar plantations in the uh, on these Atlantic islands and then in 1444 the Portuguese now involved in uh, taking slaves from the west coast of Africa begin selling them to different European countries. That is by 1444. But it's in the islands where sugarcane becomes the main crop, the cash crop, that uh, will really um, increase this trade in Africans to sell them into slavery in these sugar plantations. They had a very um, short lifespan. Working in the sugarcane fields was very dangerous. They used these sharp knives like machetes uh, to cut the sugarcane. 
uh, stalk, which they would leave uh, part of the stalk sticking up, and you have a whole line of slaves um, going forward, working in these uh, sugarcane fields, and it was not unusual, not uncommon, for them to be injured either with the knives or on the stalks that were left sticking up that were cut at an angle so they had a very sharp point on them. Uh, also, part of the danger was that periodically they would burn the fields um, to uh, prepare for uh, new crops. And they would usually set fires in several different places in the field. And the slaves had to set these fires and tend the fires. And again, it was not unusual for slaves to be caught in between uh, these fires and actually either burn to death or suffer severe burns and then later die of infection uh, from, the, from the wounds. Then in processing the sugar, they use these huge vats um, over fires, hot fires, so you have this boiling hot uh, mix in these pots, and the slaves had to tin the pots, uh, stir it, they had to transfer uh, the syrup from one pot to another, and again, uh, being burned by these scalding liquids, which being a syrup base, it's going to stick to your skin. So slaves in the sugar plantations had a very short lifespan. For instance, being able to work only maybe two or three years uh, before uh, wounds or burns or infections uh, caused their deaths. So owners of these sugar plantations would frequently have to buy more slaves. So uh, many slaves, almost uh, five million slaves, were sold into these sugar plantations between 1600 and 1800. Uh, by 1505, African slaves were brought to the Caribbean islands, which also were growing uh, sugar cane sugar plantations. The islands in the Caribbean, some were owned by the Spanish, uh, some would be owned by the British, uh, by the French, by the Dutch, and since sugar was so profitable, the majority of these islands would be growing uh, sugar cane. Uh, so they used a tremendous amount of slaves, tremendous number. Uh, the Portuguese began trading African slaves into South America by the 1540s. So the West Indies, uh, South America, almost a half a century or uh, about a century before the English colonies would be using slaves from Africa. Uh, they are being sold into South America and to those West Indies um, islands. On the next slide I have some images of uh, in the top left hand corner is a diagram of a um, would harbor slaves until slave ships uh, pulled into the port to buy and load up slaves to take uh, to other parts of the world. Uh, this was called Elmina and that fort still exists. In the lower right hand corner is an image, a photograph of the fortress at Elmina. Uh, it is now a tourist attraction. Uh, and that's on the west coast of Africa, uh, what has been called the Slave Coast. The upper um, right hand corner shows a caravan of slaves being taken from the interior of Africa to the coast to places like uh, the fortress Elmina. The lower left-hand corner shows a, an image of how the slaves 
were packed into the slave ships. It was inhuman the way they were transported. They are in an area where there's only about four feet, actually uh, three feet, three inches high, where they have to sit shoulder to shoulder with other slaves and other slaves actually sitting uh, between the legs of slaves behind them. So there is no room for them to lay down. They can't stand up. They're packed in there. As many as uh, the ship owner could pack in there, the greater his profit. If one of the slaves died, which happened very frequently, uh, he might have to, to be in position there between live slaves until periodically sailors would come down into the hold to take out all of the dead to toss them overboard. Uh, depending on the slave captains, they might, um, or the ship captains, I'm sorry, they might take a few up at a time to let them get fresh air up on the deck let them get a little bit of exercise, and then take them back down to the hold. They were meager in the food they were allowed. They had to sit there in their own waste. It was horrific, worse than even, I think, words can describe the way that they were treated uh, as they were transported um, across the Atlantic. A uh, map on the next slide uh, shows the West Indies, uh, the islands, and according to the color, uh, it shows which European nation uh, had conquered or controlled those areas. So the areas in red uh, were held by the Spanish, the blue were the French, purple is the English, and yellow is the Dutch. And by the time of this, the, that this map indicated, the Dutch didn't have very many holdings in the islands themselves. Um, but they did have a little piece of South America where they uh, had sugar plantations. Uh, you can see Cuba, uh, Puerto Rico, Santa Dominga, were some of the islands that were controlled by the Spanish. Martin Luther King said, in Martin Luther King Jr. said, in relationship to the history of slavery and the colonies, he said, nothing in the world is more dangerous than sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity. Uh, talking not only about colonial attitudes towards Africans, uh, but also bringing it uh, into the modern era, which uh, it was 1963, I think, when he made the speech, uh, where he made the statement. The name of the speech was Strength in Love, which was which he gave at a Baptist church in New York City. And that is definitely true. Nothing in the world is more dangerous than sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity. And if people don't understand uh, the true history of slavery and how it evolved, they might find reasons to excuse what the colonists did. Or not just the colonists, but uh, the Portuguese, the Dutch, uh, the French, the Spanish, uh, all of the European nations were involved in this uh, slave trade across the Atlantic. In America, the slave trade, contrary to what you might have previously believed, in the British colonies, slave trading first began with Indians and in New England. Um, Indians were captured and while it didn't work well to try to enslave the Indians in the area in which they 
traditionally lived, European uh, merchants and men involved in shipping would take those Indians to the West Indies and sell them into the West Indies as slaves. A lot of times trading an Indian slave for an African slave. African slaves were brought to New England as early as the 1620s. There was a man named Samuel Maverick in 1629 that brought, had bought some slaves and brought them to New England, um, the northern colonies, and he wanted to start a, a breed of slaves for himself. I want to read you a comment that was made by um, a man who knew this Samuel Maverick and he told about this incident uh, with one of Maverick's slaves. 2nd of October, this man was uh, John Jocelyn. The 2nd of October, about 9 o'clock in the morning, Mr. Maverick's Negro woman came to my chamber window and in her own country language and tune sang very loud and shrill. Going out to her, she used a great deal of respect toward me and willingly would have expressed her grief in English. But I apprehended by her countenance and deportment, whereupon I repaired to my host, to learn of him the cause, and resolved to entreat him in her behalf. For that I understood before that she had been a queen in her own country, and I observed a very humble and dutiful garb used toward her by another negro, who was her maid. Mr. Maverick was desirous to have a breed of negroes, and therefore, seeing she would not yield by persuasion to company with a Negro young man he had in his house, he commanded him, will she nil she, to go to bed to her, which was no sooner done, but she kicked him out again. This she took in high disdain beyond her slavery, and this was the cause of her grief. In other words, um, she was in a dreadful state mentally, emotionally because Samuel Maverick um, had commanded a Negro slave to make her pregnant so that he could uh, start breeding this, um, these slaves for himself with ha without having to buy them from Africa. Uh, Samuel Maverick was not the only man um, who dealt with slaves in New England, the northern colonies. So if you have thought previously uh, that all the blame goes to the southern colonies as far as slavery is concerned, that is not the case. Evidence shows that men in the northern colonies uh, were involved in slavery much longer than those in the South were. Uh, for instance, Jonathan Winthrop, who was the uh, Puritan leader of the first large group of Puritans that sailed from England to New, New England. I think uh, he and over 400 on the first trip, and he would serve as governor of the Massachusetts Bay Colony for a number of years. And he was buying slaves and sending them to his son who owned a sugar plantation in the West Indies. So uh, not only would he use them himself, but also he purchased slaves for his son and others in the West Indies. Also, uh, not only the English, 
but the Portuguese and the Dutch often sailed into those northern ports um, to sell slaves. England, uh, not wanting other countries to profit from English colonies, uh, England uh, created their own company to trade in slaves and it, in 1672, uh, which they would call the Royal African Company. And it was um, a joint stock company that was solely um, profiting from the slave trade. New England shippers, merchants, uh, continued to buy and sell slaves from the early 1600s uh, continuing through the 1700s. Uh, the first slaves that would be brought uh, to the south, to the southern colonies, would be in 1619 and uh, they were brought, they were Africans who had been captured from a Dutch ship by an English captain. Um, there were about 20 of them uh, and he brought them to Jamestown, the English captain. And those 20 blacks, if you check the census records of Jamestown, you can see that some of those um, never were used as slaves, but in fact became uh, property owners in Jamestown and the surrounding area. It won't be until in the mid-1600s when sugar prices begin to fall, that some of those uh, sugar plantations in the West Indies would start selling off some of their slaves, um, trying to uh, help their bottom line. They would not have used that term. It is a very modern term, the bottom line, but th that is what they were doing to try to cut down on expenses and save their profits. Uh, the next slide shows um, an advertisement in the upper left-hand corner, corner of a shipload of Negroes, a cargo of 94 healthy, prime healthy Negroes. Uh, tells which ship brought them and they were taken to New England. So it is an advertisement that appeared in the northern colonies for people interested in purchasing slaves that uh, a shipload had been brought uh, into the port. In the upper right hand corner again um, shows a group of Africans that have been captured by other Africans. Africans living on the west coast of Africa uh, became uh, what were called slave catchers and they would go into the interior and uh, either capture or encourage villages where they were having trouble uh, having enough food to feed uh, everyone in the village that often parents would sell their own children into slavery so that they would have enough to feed the rest of the family. And then the map that it shows there uh, indicates what was called the triangular trade. This was a trade that profited New England. As you can see, uh, the arrows point to New England. So this triangular trade was about taking slaves from Africa to the West Indies and then taking the uh, byproducts of the sugar cane, which would be molasses, and they would send that molasses to New England where it would be distilled into rum, and then that rum sent to Africa to purchase more slaves. Uh, so that was an ongoing trade that was occurring uh, from Africa to the West Indies to New England. This is the first half of the lesson on slavery. Um, be sure and come back for the second half. We'll be talking about 
uh, slaves in the colonies, in the British colonies. So don't forget to subscribe and come back later.